What is going on guys? It is WrestleMania here, back with some more news. Join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including more matches for The Rock this year, is AEW signing a former WWE superstar, John Cena goes nude at the Oscars, WWE is inducting Muhammad Ali into the Hall of Fame, Grayson Waller loses to Becky Lynch, WWE brings a new look for a tag team, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive layers. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania Shorts. Now let's see the intro and get straight into our first story. Our first story looks at more matches for The Rock. On top of today's news is the question whether The Rock's WrestleMania 40 match is going to be a one or done or whether he's got more matches lined up for this year. According to Dave Meltzer, fans should expect the People's Champion wrestle at least two more times after Mania. The thought that this is not going to be his only match this year. Whether it's Saudi Arabia, whether it's SummerSlam, he's probably going to wrestle Roman Reigns coming off this. That's always been the plan. You may recall speculation whether the WWE would wait until WrestleMania 41 to book The Rock vs Roman or hold it at this year's Saudi Arabia show. Meltzer apparently believes the WWE isn't going to wait that long. In addition, Meltzer noted, I think he's probably going to do a singles match with Cody probably if Cody wins the title. I can easily see them doing that match. While this is speculation on Meltzer's part, it raises an interesting question about whether The Rock will work as a heel after WrestleMania. While he could work as a babyface against Cody, it's possible The Rock could remain a heel, take over the bloodline, and set his sights on Cody, potentially with Roman turning face. And there are many possibilities which should make for plenty of excitement after WrestleMania 40. What do you guys think of these potential storylines though? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, AEW signing a former WWE superstar. It looks like AEW is interested in signing a WWE veteran who was released last September along with several other superstars. While fans have seen promotions sign free agents such as Riddle and Dolph Ziggler, there hasn't been any news concerning veteran grappler Shelton Benjamin, but that is until now. According to Fightful Select, Sean Ross Sapp, Benjamin could be AEW bound. Benjamin and All Elite Wrestling didn't have contact initially upon his free agency. The two sides have recently had conversations and discussed the possibility of him appearing for the company. Now Benjamin still looks great at 48 and he hasn't lost a step in the ring. He brings a lot to the table including his ability to work a good match with anyone, his experience and his leadership skills. Shelton could be an asset to AEW even if he doesn't wrestle as he could serve as a coach and perhaps help out in other capacities such as a producer. Do you think AEW would benefit from signing Benjamin or does the promotion already have enough talent? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, John Cena bears all at the Oscars. Cena is all over the place, but viewers got to see all of him when he showed up without any clothes to present at last night's Academy Awards. Though the 16-time world champion wasn't paying homage to the other 16-time world champion Nature Boy Ric Flair, but the man who streaked across the stage 50 years ago at the 1974 Academy Awards. Host Jimmy Kimmel's comic attempt to get Cena to recreate the publicity stunt failed when Cena protested he didn't feel comfortable, instead stepping on stage in the buff with a large envelope containing the winner of this year's Best Costume Award. Fortunately, the envelope was large enough to cover Cena's world title, and after the lights dimmed, he slipped on a toga so he could open the envelope without censors cancelling him faster than Will Smith. Next up, Sting wanted Kevin Ash to participate in his retirement match. An interesting development is making the rounds concerning Sting's recent retirement match at Revolution and why Sting's friend Kevin Nash wasn't there. Rumors began circulating that Nash couldn't appear due to being under their WWE contract, presumably a Legends contract. However, Nash clarified why he didn't attend the show. Not only that, but Nash revealed that Sting asked him to get involved in the match, much like Ric Flair and Steamboat did. Big Daddy Cool discussed things on his Click This podcast saying, For some reason, people think that Paul Triple H told me I couldn't go and my thing was I'm a WWE guy. When this first came out, it came to fruition I got contacted by Steve Sting. He was telling me what he wanted to do and then in that same breath he said, what can you do physicality wise? So if anybody wants to know why Kevin Nash was at home, that's why. He asked me what I can do physicality wise. The two time Hall of Famer elaborated on things saying he believed he was being asked to work in the match. That's the way I took it, the easiest thing to do because once you get there, then you have to tell everybody else, Steamboat and everybody else that's going to be involved in this thing. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing anything. And on top of that, you got people going through glass. Whether it's rigged glass or whether it's not, I talked to somebody that is a friend of mine that says that the shards of glass, whether it was candy coated, safety, whatever, cut people that were in the crowd. 
Liability seems to have been a concern for Nash. I think it was the one when Sting hit it with his ass. I think that was the one he went ass first. All you need is somebody to get some kind of injury. I've been in the ring before when people have gotten injured and I promise you they're not going to sue AEW. They're going to sue AEW and all the independent contractors that are involved in the match. But that's not the only reason Nash didn't want to attend the show. Nash discussed Ric Flair's retirement match and his concerns. I was at Ric Flair's retirement match, but I didn't go to the match because I was worried for Ric's health and I said, man, the last thing I want to do is see something happen to one of my friends. That was the same thing with this. The last thing I want to do is be in person and watch one of my friends get hurt. So it's just like, I'll just stay at home. And on top of all that, I didn't have a retirement match. I just effing stopped doing it. Nash also pointed out that it wouldn't make sense for him to get involved in the match without powerbombing both the Young Bucks. I'm gonna powerbomb them both and now whose night is it? Why am I doing anything? Why am I powerbombing two guys he's gonna beat later? Why am I being involved? Now guess what, you take all that out of the equation if I'm sitting on my couch in Florida. So there we go. It had nothing to do with Triple H, it had nothing to do with me being a WWE guy. It had everything to do with that I know what's right for me. I know what's right for the match, I know what's right for the evening. Nash said he knew what was the right thing to do and that's exactly what he did, stay at home. Next up, WWE announces the latest Hall of Fame inductee. This year's Hall of Fame has a big addition as boxing legend Muhammad Ali will join Paul Heyman, the US Express of Barry Windham and Mike Rotunda, and Bull Nakano. Ali reportedly developed his trash-talking skills by listening to wrestling great Gorgeous George made several appearances in pro wrestling, including serving as special referee during the first WrestleMania main event. While Muhammad Ali passed away in 2016, this is another example of how his legacy lives on. It's believed that his widow will be inducting him into the Hall of Fame. Next up, Grayson Waller loses to Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch really is the man. A video has been released of Lynch pinning Grayson Waller during a mixed tag match involving her and Kevin Owens against Waller and Nia Jax. Next up, a new look for a WWE tag team. Does the WWE feel it needs to repackage the Creed brothers? Well, that's a question some fans are asking after Brutus and Julius appeared on an episode of Main Event with a new look and new entrance theme. Brutus and Julius sported different attire accompanied by fresh graphics, logos and entrance music showcasing an evolved and updated look for their performance on the show. The WWE gave the Creed brothers a significant push when they debuted on the main roster, with the duo eventually earning a title shot against undisputed tag team champions Finn Balor and Damian Priest. The WWE Universe seemed to get behind the Creed brothers despite their failure to capture the titles. But did they need a new look to take them to the next level? Whatever the case, as for their theme music, this is the latest example of why WWE needs to bring back Jim Johnson. It sounds like default track number 31. Next up, WWE Superstar deletes social media. Where is Sheamus? Not only has the WWE Superstar been off TV since suffering a shoulder injury during his 18th August match against Edge on SmackDown, but he's apparently off X too. Wrestling News noted that the Celtic Warrior is apparently off X. Social media can be a blessing and a curse for wrestlers as they go to interact with fans but also have to deal with trolls. While there's no indication of why Sheamus has left social media, one possibility is getting ready to return to WWE. It's believed his WWE deal will be ending soon but it's more than likely that they're going to add time he missed recovering from injury onto his contract. And finally, an ex-WWE champion claims leaving WWE was the best move of his career. Paul White is a big man and he's making an equally big claim about his decision to leave the WWE for AEW. A former superstar of the big show spoke with the Yes Network's Jack Curry telling him, It's been fantastic. I was blessed to work for a big company for a lot of years all over the world. Now at my stage of the game, to find myself useful in a company that allows me to spread a lot of my knowledge to the younger talent, get a chance to get on the microphone every now and then and enhance them, help their characters along and then get them in the ring and mix it up. At 52, he can still work, but surgeries have kept him out of action, and a rumored knee surgery would obviously sideline him. Paul White jumped to AEW after failing to reach terms with the WWE on a new contract, and reportedly due to frustrations with how he was being used on TV. The big man has worked on commentary and made cameos in TV segments, in addition to working matches. But there you have it, folks, the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know. Be sure to leave your comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.